Ladies and gentlemen, Snapshot 22W44A is here with more creative inventory tweaks, spawner changes, a bunch of new game rules, and more. My name is Sliced Lime, please come with me on a tour of a 22W44A. Let's start with some changes and fixes to the new experimental blocks. As a reminder, these blocks and items only exist if you enable the Update 120 experimental pack when you create your world. The chiseled bookshelves can now be used with hoppers. A hopper pointed into the top or any side of the bookshelf will insert books in the same order as a player would, but a hopper underneath it will pull them out in the opposite order a player would. You can also use a dropper to put books in the bookshelf now. Bamboo mosaic can now be used as furnace fuel, and some of the bamboo mosaic blocks that were not flammable before now are. And bamboo fence gates now have an underside properly. There are also changes to creative mode, starting with the creative inventory where more items have been tweaked and reordered for consistency and ease of use. There's also an addition. Operator-only blocks can now be found in the redstone tab if you have the permission to use them. That currently includes all three types of command blocks, jigsaw blocks, structure voids, barrier blocks, light blocks and the debug stick, but not structure blocks. There are also other changes to blocks used in creative mode. Spawner blocks no longer have a default mob type when placed. Previously, you'd always get a pig spawner. If there's no mob type in the spawner, it also doesn't emit any fire particles. Pick block, the middle click functionality, now also works for spawner blocks. And when you have one in your inventory, it no longer displays as purple colored name and hovering over it will now also tell you which mob type it spawns or how to change this type if there is no mob set on that spawner item. The display name of spawners is now Monster Spawner, which is what the block was already called on Bedrock Edition. There are new spawn eggs in the snapshot too, for snow golems, iron golems, ender dragons and withers. Out of those, ender dragon and wither spawn eggs are not available from the creative inventory, you'll need to use commands to obtain them. The polar bear spawn eggs have also been recolored to make them easier to distinguish from ghast spawn eggs. In gameplay news, sprinting is now cancelled when you dismount while sprinting on a mount. In mob news, mobs now have their rotation again. In the previous snapshots they would always spawn facing south, both when spawned from spawn eggs and when spawned using commands. Turtles now have a breeding delay just like other breedable mobs. And a bug with frog animations has been fixed where they would walk in slow motion if they had slow falling. Let's move on to the experimental camel mobs as well. And again a reminder that these only exist if you have the update 120 experimental pack enabled in your world. The same bug as for the frogs also applied for the camels, which would walk in slow motion when under the effect of slow falling. In addition to that fix, camels can now also pathfind over 1.5 blocks tall blocks like fences and walls. And if you dashed while riding a camel that was itself riding something, it would never stop sprinting, which is also fixed in this version. We've got more news yet, but before we get into that, please take a quick moment to slow motion click that like button. That really helps get this video to show through the noise of YouTube, so I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. In world news, recreating a world would not allow you to enter a blank seed to get a random seed. That is fixed in the snapshot. This version also comes with a number of new game rules. The way blocks drop from explosions is now controllable through three new game rules. Block Explosion Drop Decay, Mob Explosion Drop Decay, and TNT Explosion Drop Decay. This controls whether loot drops from exploded blocks can decay, that is, vanish, in the explosion. With the game rule set to false, all the blocks drop, which is the default for TNT. With the game rule set to true, only some blocks will drop, which is the default for block and mob explosions. There are also two game rules controlling fluid source generation, water source conversion and lava source conversion. When these are on, a flowing block of that fluid will convert to a source block if it is surrounded on two sides by other source blocks, which is the default for water but not for lava. Another new game rule is snow accumulation height. This controls how much snow can gather on the ground when it is snowing, or specifically how many layers of snow are the maximum within the top block. If this is set to zero, no snow will form on the ground at all. All of the holiday spirit, none of the shoveling. If this is set to eight, up to a full block of snow layers can form, randomly accumulating over time. The default is one, which only lets a single snow layer form on each block. 
Finally, the global sound events game rule controls whether global sound events can occur. These events include the end being opened, the ender dragon being defeated, a wither spawning and so on. If this game rule is off, those events are instead local and can only be heard by players nearby like any other sound. Speaking of sounds, in sound news you can now properly hear when walking on carpets. Lily pads. And small amethyst blocks. And you can also hear when walking through nether sprouts. Glow lichen. Crimson roots. And warped roots. In user interface news, a bug has been fixed where some warning pop-ups would not be shown when joining a server using the dash dash server command line argument, and a case where you wouldn't get prompted to save an in-progress chat report has been fixed. In addition, some minor capitalization fixes have been done to texts on various buttons. In technical news, the block tag non-flammable wood has been removed, although it still exists as an item tag. And for custom worlds, template pools no longer have an extra name field. Let's wrap up with the stability fix. The game no longer crashes when pressing the escape key while having a draft chat report saved. That's all for this snapshot. Thank you for watching, my name is Slicedlime, and I'll see you later.